And also we say that the motion in X, Y plane. Now we have to know the basic grammar of this projectile motion. For example, so far, we have discussed the vertical motion. Let me say particle has thrown vertically upward direction or a particle is dropped from a particular height. So this motion is basically motion in Y plane, motion in Y axis or Y plane. We have talked about the horizontal motions. Suppose this is the motion. It may be uniform, it may be with certain acceleration. So this motion, we are saying this is a motion in X plane. But now we are going to discuss a motion where both this combined, that means motion in X plane and motion in Y plane, these two motion will combine and form a new category of motion. Do you get my point? Yeah. Now how it happens? For example, if it's so, for example, suppose this is the origin. So this point is zero, zero. Now, suppose you have thrown a stone, particular stone you have thrown, suppose this is the way, that, so for example, I'm just giving you an example. Suppose this is the pen, I have thrown the pen vertically upward direction. So this is vertical motion. If the pen is moving into this direction, suppose this direction this is a horizontal motion, but the, if the pen is thrown like this, that means the pen is moving like this, so this particular motion, you see there is a horizontal displacement, simultaneously there is a vertical displacement. So simultaneously two movements, that means there are two kinds of velocity in each point of this motion. Okay. Yeah. So now we will go in depth that what exactly happens in projectile motion. For example, if I just consider a stone is thrown, suppose this is the way the stone is thrown. So it has moved to the maximum point, then after that, it is moving down into this area. Now, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. Now, if I throw this particular stone with a particular velocity, suppose u0, by making an angle theta0 with the horizontal, then just imagine here, you will get one component of the velocity into this direction, another component of the velocity along the vertical axis. So this component of velocity is u0 cos of theta0, and this is u0 sine of theta0. Clear? Yeah. How it happens? Now, if anybody asks how it happens, now see, it is through vector rules like this. Suppose if this is u0, if this is theta 0, and if this angle is ux, so by using trigonometry, you can say that ux based by hypotenuse is equal to, we can say that is cos of theta. So this is cos of theta 0. So you can say ux is equal to u0 cos of theta 0. So now this ux is basically the horizontal component of this particular velocity. So whatever the velocity which you have seen over here, that is the horizontal component of u0, correct? Clear? And this is the vertical component, so it will be sine 0. Similar manner, you can go it. Okay. Now what happens? Now, now I'm just removing this area. Now, if this particle moves in this manner, so if I if I just present in a vector form, then you can say u0, this vector we can represent in the form of u0 cos of theta0 i cap. i cap means along the x-axis, okay? And this we can represent in the form of u0 sine of theta0 j cap. Now, if you have any confusion regarding the i cap and j cap, you can ask me. Is J cap just in the vertical direction? Vertical direction, along the y-axis. Now, in case if it would be in the negative axis, so then we say minus, this will be minus sign on. Otherwise, there is no difference. I cap is along the x-axis, horizontal plane, and J cap is along the vertical. Clear? Yeah. Now, the question is, suppose if anybody asks, what is the magnitude of this velocity? Now, you see how it comes. It comes like this one. If you take the mod, then it comes down to u0 
cos square theta 0 plus u 0 sin square theta 0. Now, if you take the u 0 square common, then it comes down to cos square theta 0 plus sin square theta 0. So ultimately it comes down to this is this value is 1. So u0 yeah. square into 1, that means it comes down to u0. So how you are getting this is basically the vector representation. This is basically the vector representation, and this is basically the magnitude. That means how this u0 we can represent. This is the way we can represent the u0. That is the magnitude of this velocity in this form. That means from this particular form, we can again come back to the u0. If you take the magnitude, then we can find in this way. Clear? Yeah. This is the way we can find out the magnitude. So this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component. So this one we consider as the horizontal component of the velocity and this one we consider as the vertical component of this velocity. Okay. Now the beauty is I'm just comparing with the vertical motion that what happens. For example, if you consider this particular point is B and that is the maximum height suppose, say h max. Now, if it is a vertical motion, so vertical motion what happens? If you throw a particular particle with a velocity u0 and this height is h, so at the highest point, the velocity of the particle becomes zero, correct? Yeah. Because at this topmost point, the velocity of the particle, obviously it will be zero. So we write down the equation V square is equal to U zero square minus two G H. Correct. Yeah. So now we can write zero square is equal to U zero square minus two G H. So we can write it is in this form minus U zero square by two G is equal to H. So minus and minus if you strike out. So H max in the vertical motion, we get it in this manner, 2G. So this is the way we can find out the maximum height in a vertical motion. Correct? Okay. Yeah. Clear, no? It will go clear? Yeah. Now you see what happens, the beauty in the projectile motion. Sir, when you have projected this particle at every point, listen very carefully, at every point, the velocity is changing and your angle is also changing. Like, for example, if you take a point over here or here. Sir, here in this case, the, this is basically the direction of velocity. This is the direction of velocity. So here, angle with the horizontal is changing. Here it is theta zero. Suppose here it is theta. Clear? Mm -hmm. So naturally, this component will be at that time. Suppose here the velocity is we are considering u. So this component, horizontal component will be u of cos theta and the vertical component will be u of sine theta. Now what happens over here? In this case, when you have thrown this particle, the particle was moving like this. Horizontal component of the velocity initially, it was u0 cos theta 0. The vertical component was u0 sine theta 0 because the velocity, initial velocity was u0. But after a certain time, when it has reached to this particular point here, the what is really happens that the velocity will be changed. It will be reduced definitely. But here the velocity is in along this direction. So along this direction, for example, along this direction. Along, suppose this point you consider, oh, this point you consider A. So along AB, the velocity is u. So u cos of theta will be the horizontal component and u sine of theta, this one, will be the vertical component at this point. So this is basically u sine theta and u cos. So every point, the velocity is changing and the horizon angle is changing, so velocity is changing. So horizontal component and vertical component, this is also changing. But Sir, at the highest point, sir, this velocity exists. Suppose this velocity is Vx at the highest point and this velocity is Vy. Now, if you just look into this carefully, sir, it never happens when the we have thrown this particle at the highest point. One, after reaching to the highest point, 
particle will never move into this way. No, it will never possible. Particle will move into this manner. Correct? This is the normal yeah. movement of the particle whenever you throw a stone. So, in this case, the Vy component that is equal to 0. At the highest point, this happens, I am telling, this is at the highest point, the vertical component, actually it is 0. Only Vx exists. Clear? Yeah. Now, then how we can write down this equation? Now, the question is how we can write down this equation. Now, see, your first thing, this velocity, that is, u0 sine of theta 0. Now, if I consider the particle has taken from O point, it has taken time t to reach this particular position B. That means from point A, the particle has taken time t time to reach the point B. So, now we can write down this equation that here Vy square is equal to u0 sin square theta 0 minus 2 into g into h. Now see that same formula, whatever we have used over here, same thing we have applied over here. Just compare these two things, this with this. So same thing, only difference, sir, here the vertical component is u0 sin theta 0 and here the vertical component is u0. Because it is on the vertical motion and it is on the projectile motion. So that's why it is u0 sin theta 0. And here it is only u0. Is it clear? Yeah. Boya chana, Shwani. Adam clear to? Okay. If you have any questions, something you will just raise your hand. I will stop. Okay. Okay. Now what exactly I do? This Vy is 0, sir, because at the topmost point. The topmost point is this. So at that time, there is no vertical motion because at that time, the particle only having the horizontal motion, then again, it will come back to the ground once again. So at the topmost point, Vy, that is the vertical velocity of this particle is zero. So now what exactly we can do over here, that is zero square is equal to u zero square sine square theta zero minus 2g h max. So we can say these things h max that is equal to u0 sine square theta 0 divided by g. So minus minus if you subtract. So this is the maximum height which you will get in case of a projectile. So if anybody say what is the maximum height? How to find out the maximum height? This is the concept. By using this, we can find out the maximum height attained by a particle in case of a projectile. That's the concept. Okay. So how it comes? Is it clear up to this? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now another interesting thing. Sir, once we are drawing by the, for example, suppose if I just take this scenario. Suppose if it is a vertical motion. Suppose this point is B, this point is A. So you have thrown a particular point U0. So at the point B, VB is equal to 0, obviously, because the particle has moved like this. And then it is reached the maximum height, then it will fall like this, correct? Yeah. So in that case, the beauty, suppose T time it has taken to reach to the maximum height. So we can say VB is equal to U0 minus GT. Obviously, because minus will be there. So, Vb is 0. So, we can write down 0 is equal to, we can write u0 minus gt. So, from there, we can find out u0 minus g is equal to t. So, if you subtract, this is basically the time taken to reach the maximum height in a vertical motion. Clear? So, yeah. if it happens in vertical motion, then what it would happen in projectile motion? Now see what happens. So in projectile motion, what happens at that point, Vy is 0. Vy is equal to 0. So we can say Vy is equal to u sine of theta 0 minus g 
into t now is it clear in case of project and the same equation whatever you have written over here in this area so same equation in case of project and suppose you have written this equation so this is the equation you have written in case of vertical motion so here vb was zero so here vy will be also zero clear yeah vy means this is the velocity at the along the y plane so vy at that particular point when it has reached to the maximum height so along the y axis your velocity becomes zero but this exists because this particular things and this is basically the initial velocity so here u0 cos theta 0 that we are not going to consider why we are not going to consider because sir you are considering the height the displacement along the y axis so if you are considering the displacement along the y plane then definitely you should not select the this particular component of the velocity which is working on the x plane clear so yes. that's why we will consider only this particular velocity u0 sin theta 0 which is given along the y plane so now what will happen over here it comes down to 0 it is u sine of theta 0 minus gt. So ultimately t is coming down to u sine of theta 0 by g. So that is the way we can find the time to reach the maximum height. Simple as that. Time to reach the maximum height in case of a vertical motion. So this was this time to reach the maximum height in vertical motion. In projectile motion, time to reach the maximum height is this. Is it my marker is clear to you in your, is it visible? Yeah. So this is the maximum. Then what is the time to reach from this particular point to the ground? Same, that is u0 sin theta 0. So total time of flight, this is the total time of flight taken by the particle. That means from this particular point, Particle has reached to this point. Again, it has come back to this point. So total time of flight. So this total time of flight taken by the particle. So that is basically capital D, which is equal to 2T. And that is equal to 2 into U into sine of theta 0 pi G. Now it is clear. Yeah. It should go inside Mane physics. You have to take from the passion, from the heart, from the core of your heart. Because this is a subject which totally based on concepts. Okay. So you have to take this subject from the core of your heart. Then only you can understand. Mane, it is not that you memorize so many formulas. So many, then it is difficult to handle this subject because this subject is totally based on concepts. Okay. So this is the way we try to understand this subject. So now we have got it that how the total time of flight, we have got the maximum height, how to got it. So these are the two important things we have come to know. Now we will see, sir, there was another velocity exists that is the horizontal velocity, that is u0 cos of theta. Now if anybody says, suppose the particle which has started from A, it has reached to the point B, and then again come back to the point A point. Now the beauty is what about AOE? OA means this distance. That is the range, horizontal range. Now that time you will say, sir, time of flight, that means the time taken to reach to this particular point O to B is the same time to reach from O to this particular point. For example, if I consider this point, your local dot and this point, so if I consider this point is C, so time taken to reach from O point to C point and time taken to reach from O point to B point, these are same time. Same, this time is same. Similarly, time taken from B to A and time taken from C to A, this is also same. Time is basically same. So that means O to A, the time it has taken, because this is the horizontal distance the particle has covered, clear? 
So yeah. if anybody asks that what is the vertical displacement of the particle at the end of the journey, you will say it is zero. Vertical displacement is zero because it has started from this, it is reached to the this side, then again come back to so vertical displacement of the particle is zero, but the horizontal displacement is this range, OA. Clear? Yeah. Now, OA is equal to R. That is the horizontal displacement. Now the beauty is, sir, in this entire projectile motion, if you just take a look, you will find that G is always acting vertically in the downward direction. So G has no component horizontally because he, this angle is 90 degrees. So this will be G cos 90 around the horizontal component acceleration. Clear? So ultimately this value will be equal to zero. That means every point there are two kinds of velocity. One is vertical, another one is horizontal. Here also you see same vertical horizontal because once it is falling vertical vertical velocity will be downward direction but a horizontal velocity is not going to change that means the vx value whatever the value at this particular point same value at this 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 point. what i'm trying to say sir if you just assess this movement the particle has moved like this and then it has fallen into that particular area. Sir, once it has started its journey with a velocity u0 and if theta0 is the angle, then u0 cos of theta0 is the starting velocity that is ux. That is horizontal component. Sir, here apparently you may say that here the angle is changing but the velocity is also decreasing. So here if you say all these velocities, horizontal component, whatever it is, sir, it is ultimately u0 cos of theta. It is not going to change. Now the question is why it is not going to change? Because sir, there is no acceleration acting on the particle horizontally because g is acting vertically. So if the g is acting vertically and if the particle, if you take the horizontal component of the velocity, then how it is going to affect because the G, if you take the horizontal component, it is zero. G cos 90. So cos 90 value is zero. So G cos 90 is zero. So horizontally, there is absolutely no acceleration. Acceleration working only in the vertical direction. So that's why the velocity is going down because the starting velocity U0 sine theta zero, that is going down. But the horizontal velocity has not changed. It is It remains unaffected. That is the beauty. So that's why, sir, R will be U0 cos of theta 0 into capital T. Now, what this capital T? Capital T is the total time of flight. So this is the total time of flight. So now we can say, what is the value of T? So T is basically, we know that is u0 sine of theta 0 by 2u divided by g. How you get it? Sir, so from here, this is, this we put over here. So now if you put this value over here, then you see r is equal to u0 cos of theta 0 into another thing. That means 2 into u0 sine of theta 0 by g. Now that we can write down in a different way that is u0 square 2 into sine of theta 0 into cos of theta 0 by g. Uh, do you know what is the value of this 2 sine theta 0 cos theta 0 in trigonometry maths? One formula is there 2 sine theta cos theta. This is sine of 2 theta. This is in trigonometry. So this formula we have to know whenever we do this. This is an interesting formula. So you can say u0 square into sine of 2 theta 0 divided by g. So this is the way we can find out the horizontal range. So now if I just combine, so far whatever we have discussed, sir, we have discussed maximum vertical displacement. We have discussed time taken to reach to the maximum height. We have taken total time of flight. 
and also it, and maths also money if you do the physics your maths has to be very strong because we will go very depth in physics because i have seen your questions if you want to create 100 out of 100 top category score then you have maths has to be very strong because everywhere in physics maths application is required if your maths is not so strong then it will be difficult for you to understand so many things because now um, it is just the beginning. Your three important things, one is calculus, another one is coordinate geometry and trigonometry. These three things very much important and very much applicable in physics problem. Whenever you will do the things, you will see coordinate geometry, parabola concept is coming, then calculus is coming. So physics without maths, it is not possible. Everywhere you have to apply the maths. তুমি চাইলেও কিছু করতে পারবে না তোমাকে ম্যাথ সাপ্লাই করেই করতে হবে ওকে সো দিস ইজ দ্যাকচুয়ালি ইট হ্যাপস সো দিস ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য ট্রিগোনোমেট্রিক ফর্মুলা দ্যাট টু সাইন থিটা কস থিটা মিন সাইন অফ দিস ইজ দ্য মাল্টিপল অ্যাঙ্গেলস এর ফর্মুলা সো সো জাস্ট এটা জেনে রাখো দিস হ্যাপেন্স সাইন টু সাইন থিটা কস থিটা ইজ ইকুয়াল টু সাইন থিটা নো ইউ মে আস দিস क्वेश्चन আই জাস্ট সার ইফ আই ডোন্ট নো দিস থিং ইজ देयर एनी রং ইজ देयर एनी প্রবলেম ফর মি yes problem is not to ideate these things but the problem is suppose if anybody is the what about r max that means suppose there is an olympic you have been mentioned that you will javelin throw is going on so someone is you know in india niraj chopra this time an olympic she, he got silver on pakistan he has got the bronze uh, gold now the if you see the u actually this Olympic medal is given on the basis of horizontal range, not on the basis of your vertical height. How much you have thrown the vertical height, that's not the issue. Ultimate thing is R max. That is the basis on which the Olympic gold medal. Now, sir, if U0 is same, Niraj Chopra and that particular Pakistani, those who have uh, thrown this javelin, the U0 was same. Initial velocity was same. So G is also same at that particular point. But the angle makes the difference. That is the key area, this angle. That means, what is the maximum value of any sine of alpha? Suppose, any, sir, it lies between minus 1 to plus 1. Any angle of sine of angle lies between. That means, this is the maximum value of sine theta. Now, if this sine 2 theta, so maximum value of sine 2 theta, so if it is 1, then we can say sine of 2 theta is equal to sine of pi by 2, minus sine 90 degree. So now we can say 2 theta is equal to pi by 2. Clear? So theta yeah. is equal to, we can say pi by 4. That means if you want to get your maximum range, then you have to aim so that you can throw the javelin or particle or whatever it is by making an angle 45 degree with the horizon. If the angle is more or if the angle is less, then you are not going to get the maximum range. Well, you may reach to the maximum height, but not the range. If you want to get the maximum range, that angle has to be 45 degree with the horizon. So if it happens, as that means sine theta value has to be one. So now the R max is equal to U0 square by G into 1. So it comes down to U0 square by G. So this is one type of questions I have seen in your uh, question paper. So this is one area by which we can understand these things, that how to find out the R max value. That's the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have any questions, ask me up to this level. Mm, no, it makes sense. So whatever we have on, let's sum up. First thing we have under the maximum height. Then we have say what is the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Then we have considered the total time of flight. That means if you have thrown a particular particle from this place, it has moved to the maximum height, then it has fall to this level. So total time of flight. Then we have also the horizontal range it has covered by the particle which is thrown. And also you have seen the 
uh, this this important concept that horizontal component of the velocity is not going to get change in the entire projectile motion. Then what is changing? So this is the vertical velocity. So this vertical velocity is changing, but the horizontal velocities remains unaffected. The question is why it is remain unaffected? The reason is sir, acceleration due to acting acceleration due to gravity acting vertically in the downward direction. So if we take the horizontal velocity, acceleration due to gravity has no component. It is zero along the horizon. And the horizontal direction, acceleration due to gravity is zero. Because g cos of 90, that component is zero. So that's why there is no acceleration along the horizontal direction. There is only one acceleration is acting, that is the vertical plane. So that's why the vertical velocity is changing, but the horizontal velocity remains unaffected during the entire course of the motion. Yeah. Is the Pachis though that Baba? Interest Pachis? Yeah, just the um for the range. Why is it u zero squared and not just uh -huh. zero? Well, well, yeah? For the range, why is it u zero squared? Yeah. U zero squared by g, correct? Yeah. Now see, this is sine two theta. So we have to make it maximum. So alpha, in case of alpha, we will put sine of two theta. Mm -hmm. So now this value is equal to one because we have to get the maximum value. So sine two theta here, if it is sine alpha, maximum value is one, minimum value is minus one, clear? So now yeah. the sine two theta, that is also an angle. So this angle maximum value when theta is equal to 45 degree, then only it is possible. So you put theta 45 degree, then it will be sine of two into 45 degree. So it will become sine of 90 degree. So it value is one. Because our main objective is theta has to be pi by four, that is 45 degrees. So if you put the value of theta is equal to 45 degree, then it comes down to sine of 90 degree. So sine 90 degree value is come down to one. So now we can see zero square by G, that is the maximum horizontal range. This is the way we can get it. So first thing is here we have to understand two theta is equal to pi by two. So theta is equal to pi by four, and that is 45 degree. If I put the value over here, because here alpha means two theta, correct? So here alpha means two theta. So if you put the value of theta is equal to 45 degree, you will get sine 90 degree and the value of sine 90 degree is one. So ultimately we'll get u zero square by g that is the maximum horizontal range. So this is covered by the value. So if you see that though two javelin throwers, if their initial velocity is same, those have given the same amount of force, but still, you see, one is first, another one is second. That means definitely the angle of projection that matters most. If the angle of projection is not exactly 45 degrees, slightly lesser than 45 or slightly more than 45, then definitely it is going to change. Then someone will first, someone will second. That's the way it happens. Actually, it is the way it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the way you have to understand this concepts of projectile and basic concepts of projectile okay now we have to understand another important that the relation between the relation between this r and h sir so r is the horizontal range hey sorry r is the horizontal range correct and h is the vertical height attained by the particle that means for example if the particle moves like this, it reaches to the maximum height, then it falls like this. So what is this relation H and R? So what is the relation between these two? Now, if you want to find out this relation, so first thing is R, which have already got R is equal to U square sine 2 theta by G. And H is equal to, we have already got U square sine square theta by 2g. So these are the equation we already we have derived in the earlier page, correct? In the last time, this, this page, you see that here we have seen this, this is basically the value of r. 
that is the value of r and here we have calculated the value of h so there we have calculated the value of h correct so h and r both we have calculated clear yeah so now what exactly we are going to do so here we have just written this particular value over here now the so important thing is that this one we will break so we can write down r by h that means we are dividing one divided by two so if i divide these things it is coming down to u square by g and here sin 2 theta we are writing 2 sin theta cos of theta divided by we are writing it is u square sin square theta by 2g now check what exactly you have done this was sin 2 theta now value of sin 2 theta this we can write down 2 sin theta cos of theta that already i have mentioned to you that is the basic value clear Yes. So now this formula, this value we have put over here. This value we have put over here. And here, this u square by g, whatever the value was there, that I have mentioned over here. And here u square sine square theta by 2g, that is the value of h. That is the maximum height attained by the projectile motion. So that we have written over here. So now this will strike out this, this will strike out this. So ultimately, it will come down to two sine theta cos of theta, this one, divided by sine square theta into two. So these two will go upwards. So one sine theta will be cut over here. So it comes down to four of cot of theta. So four cot theta, that is the R by H. So that is the relationship between R and H. This is very, very crucial. So many occasions, you may not have the spin to derive it, but this relationship, how it comes and in different problems, we can use this relation in projectile motion. That R by H is equal to 4 part of theta. Clear, Shani? Yeah. Just check it. This relation is extremely crucial in case of a projectile motion. So that's the way we can we can forward these things. Just check it. Yeah. So that is one of the area which you have so far discussed. So these are the areas which you have to understand once we are highlighting the problem based on project. Have you uh, have you gone through the projectile chapter so far? Uh, the questions you sent. Yeah. Yeah, I went through that. I had a question about one of them, but okay. you're just going through the a few of the questions, correct? Yeah. Okay. So now this portion was this was already have studied whatever I have discussed so far. Yeah, but I was a little bit confused on the, the maximum height equation, like how it was 2G on the bottom. Okay. So that means T to time to take to the maximum height, then T time to take to the downward direction, the 2D, and her, the total time of flight, how it comes, all these things, correct? You know, like the in the equation for maximum height, like the 2G at the bottom of... Okay. Like, yeah. So, so far now, the any confusion? No. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, just check some of the problems if I just consider. Take an easy problem. Take an easy problem like this. For example, uh, no, another equation, another important concept that is the equation of trajectory. This is another important question. Have you heard this term, trajectory, equation of trajectory? Uh, no, not yet. Gone through it. Huh? Bonanche Shunetish. 
like I heard it, but I don't really know like what it is. No problem. So it is very simple. Like it is very simple. So suppose it is very simple. I'm just giving a suppose you have thrown this particle this way. So it will move to this level and then it will fall like this. Now, in any point during its motion, suppose this is the point we have considered, this point is P. And we consider the coordinate of the point is x, comma y. That means this side is y. And this side is x. This distance is x, correct? So coordinate of the point is p. Now you have thrown this particle with a velocity, suppose u. And by making an angle theta with the horizon. So this is the horizontal component of the velocity that is u cos theta. And that is the vertical component of the velocity that is u sin theta. Now let's consider, let's consider the particle has taken, let's consider that the particle, this particle has taken, this particle has taken time t to reach, to reach the point p from o and o is the origin. What does it mean? That means from the point O, the particle has thrown with a velocity u by making an angle theta with the horizon. Clear? Yeah. The particle is moving like this. Now, once it has reached the point P, then the coordinate of the point is x, comma y. That means the vertical displacement of the particle is y and horizontal displacement of the particle is x. Clear? Yeah. Suppose this point is P, this point is B. Now, if anybody say, how we will define, that means time taken, time taken to cover O to B, suppose this is T seconds. And time taken from O to P, I mean P means, uh, it's not O to P, but I should say, time taken to reach from B to P, that is also T seconds. Obviously, it has to be, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, if I draw the equation for OB, that is X is equal to, we can write down U cos of theta into T. That is our equation number one. Because in the horizontal plane, so uniform velocity, no acceleration. So you will write S is equal to VT, that particular formula. This is S, this is V, this is T. So S is equal to V into T for uniform velocity. That formula we have applied. X is the displacement, horizontal displacement. U is basically the horizontal velocity, horizontal component of the velocity. And T is the time taken to reach from O to B. Clear? Yeah. Now take the vertical motion. So what we should write? Can you tell me up to this point, y is equal to what to write? Uh, u sine theta t minus 2gh. G? 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 Oh, delta g? y? Then uh, after g, half g then? Um, The height. Oh. Okay, fine. I'm telling you. Suppose a body is moving into this direction. Yeah. It is thrown with a velocity u. And suppose the height is h. If it takes t time to reach this point, suppose if I mention h is equal to what to write? ut minus half g into t square. Correct? So here it will be t square. Now it is clear? Yeah. Clear or not? Tell me. Same thing, no? because only the vertical component of the velocity that will change rest of that because this velocity is basically your ui. That is the ui. Mean, along the y component, what is the velocity? U is the velocity which is making an angle with the theta. So this is basically ui and this is basically your ux. 
So once we are talking about the x, that is the horizontal displacement, horizontal displacement means OB, then we are using ux, that is your ux, u cos theta into t. And once we are taking the vertical displacement, vertical displacement means what? A particle has reached from O to P, that means this is the vertical displacement, clear? So if it is yeah. the vertical displacement, then we write down u sin theta into t minus half g t square. So that is the way you have to write them. Now what exactly you are going to, this is your equation number two. So now what we are going to do, we have to eliminate this t, like here x by u cos of theta, that is equal to t from this equation. Now put the value of t here, put the value of t over here. So if you put the value of t over here, then how would it happen? u sin theta. Now check the what is the value of t, x by u cos theta. So it comes down to x by u cos theta, clear? Yeah. Then it comes down to half into g into t square, that means x square by u square cos square theta. So this is the way we get the equation. Now, this u and u, you cut it down. Then you take this is as x tan theta. How it is x tan theta? Sin theta by cos theta, tan theta. Then here it comes down to g by 2. Here it comes down to x square by u square cos square theta. This one. So this is called equation of trajectory. The equation which I've got from here, this is called equation of trajectory. So this equation you can place in a different form. Like if you take x common from here, then you will get here there. Suppose x tan theta if you take common. Suppose you take x tan theta common from here. Then you will get 1 minus g into x by 2 into u square cos square theta and here x we already have taken common so here it will be tan of theta. Now just check whether you have understood this or not. I repeat one second. x tan theta have taken common. So if you take x tan theta common then it will be 1. Clear? Yeah. And here x tan, so x you have taken common from here, so it will be gx in the numerator. And the denominator 2 u square cos square theta already was there. So tan theta, if you take an outside, so in the denominator portion, there will be tan theta. So mm -hmm. now you take it in a simple form. So 1 minus g into x by 2 into u square into cos square theta sin theta by cos theta. So if you just cut it down, so ultimately how much it coming? So it coming down to x tan theta into 1 minus g into x divided by 2 when u square into 2 sin theta cos theta. That would come. Now if you put the g below, if you take the g below of it, then how it comes? So it comes down to x tan theta and here it comes down to 1 minus x by u square 2 sin theta cos theta means sin 2 theta. So this by g. Sir, what is this value? A value to aage dekhe chi? Sir, yes, this value is r. That is u square sin 2 theta by g. We know. So what exactly we can do? Age value she. So this value we can replace with R. That value we can replace with R. It are put to the question paper. I mean problems. There is one problem they have given on this. So this had come down to x by R. So this is the way we can write down the equation of trajectory at an important area. So why this why they have equated with this equation. So, represent first that up to this level it is not difficult, sir. Up to this level it is clear. Clear? A position to clear. Right? 
এবার বাকিটা দেখ কিছুই না জাস্ট সাবস্টিটিউট করে করে সাবস্টিটিউট করে করে ভ্যালুটাকে এনেছি সো হিয়ার এক্স্যাক্টলি সাবস্টিটিউট করলে এই ভ্যালুটা দিয়ে হয়ে যায় বাট অনেক ক্ষেত্রে দে উইল দে উইল ফর্মুলেট দ্য ইকুয়েশন ইন দিস ম্যানার দে উইল ফর্মুলেট দিস ইকুয়েশন এন্ড দে উইল আস দ্যাট হোয়াট ইজ দ্য রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন দ্য রেঞ্জ বিকজ দিস ইজ ইয়োর হরাইজন্টাল ডিসপ্লেসমেন্ট এন্ড দিস ইজ দ্য রেঞ্জ স্যার হোয়াট ইজ ডিফারেন্স বিটুইন এক্স এন্ড আর এক্স এন্ড আর ইজ sir r is basically this entire portion correct yeah this end. and x is this one only this one clear and y yeah. is this one. so eta hoche tor jante hobe equation of trajectory the this is called ei je equation ta dekhchi this is called this is called equation of trajectory equation of trajectory this is called equation of trajectory and what is this so this is also equation of trajectory but in modified form this is in modified form modified form of equation of trajectory school e porichhe eta na ekhono na kobe theke start korbe school e jani na ekhon just basic kinematics hocche ei past week kinematics cholche ভার্টিক্যাল মোশনে ওই একটা সার্টেন হাইট এর উপর থেকে থ্রো করাটা দেখিয়েছে আম লাস্ট ইয়ার দেখিয়েছিল এই বছর দেখাইনি ইয়ার বছর দে हैव नॉट ডিসকাসড ইট সো ফার ওটা জানা আছে তো ওই যে এইচ টা এই মাইনাস ইউ টি প্লাস হাফ জি টি স্কয়ার হয় ওই কনসেপ্টটা হ্যাঁ একটু মানে ওটা জেনে নে দাঁড়া আমি দেখিয়ে দিচ্ছি ওটা খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট তোদের क्वेश्चन আসে যে whenever you have thrown a particular particle suppose this is the edge that is the building height suppose if you drop a particle from this suppose ab is the building suppose if you if you thrown a particle a thrown a particular particle vertically upward direction so this is moving like this and again it has fall like this and it is fall into the ground so in that case suppose u is the velocity so in that case if h is the height of the building so from a to b time taken by the particle it will be h is equal to and here once the the particle is crossing the building the velocity is minus u always remember at the time once you have thrown the particle then it is class u once this particle is moving to the maximum height once it is falling down and crossing the edge of this particular building this edge at that time the velocity will be same correct yeah. so both the velocity once it is thrown and once it is crossing this particular edge the point a that is the velocity will be same but only thing it is will be minus u keno minus u because the reason is the direction has changed so that's why it will be minus so here the equation will be minus ut plus half gt square because you see up to this level your displacement is zero correct so it is clear na a two point the displacement is zero kintu this is basically the net displacement of the particle so that's why in that case we are using this equation সাপোজ তোকে বলা হলো একটা পার্টিকেল এখান থেকে ড্রপ করা হলো সাপোজ এ পার্টিকেল ইজ ড্রপড সো ইউ ইজ इक्वल टू মানে ইউ এ ইজ इक्वल टू 0 सपोज इट हैज टेकन t1 टाइम टू रीच द ग्राउंड सो यू से दैट h इज इक्वल टू 0 into t1 plus half into g into t1 स्क्वायर इजंट इट इजंट इट करेक्ट अच्छा बोल तो सपोज द पार्टिकल इज थ्रोन हॉरिजॉन्टली and the particle has fallen onto the ground and once it has thrown horizontally at that time the velocity was u it has taken t time t2 time to reach the ground and another particle is dropped from the same height that is a one is thrown vertical uh, horizontally another in is thrown horizon uh, vertical but it is dropped it is thrown is it both the particle will reach the ground at the same time yeah yes or no yes yes okay. correct why yes because sir in the first case 
the equation is this that is this is equal to half g into t1 square clear for second particle you have a velocity that is ux but along this direction your ui is zero why zero when along the vertical because ui means ux cos of 90 that means this particular velocity which you have seen horizontally vertical component of that velocity is zero ux has no component vertically so that's why here in that particular case the equation for this particle will be h is equal to ui into t2 plus half into g into t2 square so ui means ux cos 90 which is equal to zero so h is equal to zero into t2 plus half g into t2 square so that means equal to half g into t2 square because this is zero so this is half g t2 square this is half g both are equal to h so now you can say half g into t1 square is equal to half g into t2 square so if you strike out then t1 is equal to t2 okay yeah so this is the way you have to idea it this is also an integrated concept of these two things an integrated concept of projectile motion and vertical motions yeah so so far what exactly we have discussed today that horizontal range maximum horizontal is time of flight total time of flight vertical height and equation of project uh, trajectory this equation is extremely important that is the equation of trajectory and how we are coming to this equation because most of the problem will come from the basis of equation of trajectory okay so this is very very crucial so you have to understand these things equation of it i think from kinematics after completion of the vertical motion and horizontal motion they will start the project most probably i'm not sure in your school most probably they will start the project tui ki er moddhe abar mit te ki canvas na ki ki canvas to na ki sob banacchi shunlam toke jete hobe 3 weeks er jonno class kamai hobe uh ekta week er jonno one week the three week just one one week one week manageable but three weeks so difficult okay. anyway so now we have understood these are the things so you please go through the lectures and see the end results how it is coming i will forward you the uh, recordings i'm having the recordings of the last class also okay yeah so you need the recordings correct yeah okay so i'll forward the recordings okay so you just go through this and then the then the study mat which have forwarded to work kids okay so these are the concepts which is extremely important Chalo, bye okay thank hmm. you